Let's look at our basic outline of the website that we're trying to create within this course. So we've got our regular view here on the left hand side and our mobile view on the right hand side. Now I'm going to open up the editor and we're going to start creating our HTML structure in order to build out this website. And I've got my quick preview here on the right hand side. So initially you're probably not going to see much coming out of that HTML because we're going to essentially build out that structure with the elements. We're going to start with a header. So this is going to be our main header area and we're going to give it an ID of header. So this is just in case we decide to use header again uh, so that we can identify it within our HTML, within our CSS. And then within this header, I want to have two separate sections. The first section is going to be the logo area. So this is just going to be a regular div and I'm going to give it an ID of logo. And we'll just close that off and maybe we can put company name or something like that there just to hold that place. And then next I want to set up the navigation bar. So this is going to be our main nav bar and I'm going to give it an ID of nav bar. And these are just ways that I can identify it within my CSS. So that's why I'm giving them IDs there. We may or may not need them as uh, as needed, but I like to have it within my main structure of my website to be able to easily identify the different elements that are available. So within the nav bar, typically when we're designing navigation menus, we do them as unordered lists. And this presents the, the list of navigation items really neatly as list items. So I can create my first one here, and this will be href and I'm just going to leave it as a blank href right now or maybe I can place in index.html so that we have that in place. Uh, close that off and just hit type in home and I'm going to just copy and paste this. Uh, so typically for websites we're going to have maybe four different items here in the menu. So the next one we could do an about me section. So just call it about and we're we'll going to create an about.html page after we finish out the template and do our styling. That's when I'm going to add in these additional pages. And the reason being is that I'd have to I have to plan out how I'm attaching the CSS first. And this is why I'm going to do the copying and pasting of that HTML structure and the other pages at the end uh, after I've done my styling. So this one could be for products. And I'm going to just call this page products.html. And then lastly, every web page needs to have a contact form. So we need to have a way to get a hold of the website owner if they want to place an order or something like that so that we have a way that the owner of the website can be contacted. So that's what our website looks like right now. So it doesn't really look exactly like a website but we are going to be building this out and when we apply that styling it's really magically going to all come together. So the next thing within our plan when we're looking at our plan so we've got the two sections here that we've just created we created this logo area we created the nav bar the navigation area so that's it for the head section of our website and the next is this intro welcome message type section container area and this we're going to do it as just a div we could do it as a section as well so maybe we can do it as a section or a div and remember this is only going to be present when on the intro page so I'm going to give it an ID and I'm going to call it welcome so that we can easily identify it and welcome to my website and we're not going to display this uh, on the other pages. It's just going to be on the index page again. Uh, so next, we got to look at a container area. So we can do this as a section if we want, or we can do it as a div. And if you're not familiar with HTML5, what happened with HTML5, initially when we were building out websites, we would call them 
we would create them all as divs and we'd give them these IDs like header, navbar, and they'd all be divs and essentially they take up that full block of available code. But what happened when HTML5 came along is that they decided to bring everything together and have it within one container area. So I uh, have it as named semantics uh, instead of divs. So it would just make more sense when you're looking at the code. Uh, so instead of divs, uh, we change them to headers and eventually right now they're functioning the same way as it would with divs. So they are interchangeable but best practice is usually to go with the HTML5 semantic elements. So this one is going to be section and I'm going to give it a class of container. and close that off and then within that container I'm going to have two separate sections. So I'm going to have a main section for the content. So a section and I'm going to give this one a class of content or you could call it main or something like that and then beside it I have a side and a side is the element that we use or the tag that we use for side menu so this would just be side menu or sidebar and maybe we can give this one a class as well side so we'll just give it a class of side menu uh, so that takes care of the next section and then lastly what we need to do is create a footer that's one of the things when you have uh, brackets doing the self-closing of the tags it writes a little bit quicker but sometimes if you press that closing of that tag too quickly then it creates one that you're not trying to create so uh, so that that's what just happened there so I'm going to give this one an ID of footer and then here we're going to put company copyright 2016 or something like that and we can do the, the copyright symbol so add that in So now let's go quickly take a look at and see what this looks like. So when I refresh the screen here, so that, that's one of the things here with brackets as well that I'm adding it in and as I'm adding in and updating, it's just updating the next piece. So it's not actually refreshing the content. So that's why I ended up with a whole line of these uh, repeated pieces of code. Uh, so maybe I need to add in some additional content here so that I know this is content about the site uh, side menu I have navigation so I do have some placeholder information for every piece for every element for every one of my main elements within my website uh, so we're ready to go with the next step and start really building out this website and presenting it and making it actually look more like a website and also there's a few things here that you might have noticed that while I was building these out so I started out with IDs I've got IDs here and I've got classes so if you're familiar with CSS then you know that IDs are for unique elements and classes are for reusable elements and one of the classes here uh, so whenever we're using bootstrap it already has some pre-built classes within it so I have used classes down here and I use this one container and this is actually a bootstrap class so it's already a predefined class in bootstrap so when I open up bootstrap here under containers we see that we already have a class container and essentially this is what allows us to create a responsive fixed width container uh, and then within here is where we could create some rows and columns and this is going to be useful when I want to apply some of my bootstrap content within that main content area and that's why I've given it a class of container and of course can classes we can reuse as many times as we want and this is the same thing here for the content because if I want to have multiple sections I might want to have different uh, content styling and I might want to reuse that styling in different parts of the website 
Uh, so this is where I've used a class and then also for the side menu I've used a class. So these IDs I know I don't want to reuse anywhere else within the website and that's why I've stuck them as IDs because I've uh, predefine them and I'm, sent, I'm setting them up just as IDs so they're only going to be in one element within the page but I might be using these classes multiple times and that's why there's the difference and then of course because I'm going to be adding bootstrap I'm using some of the predefined bootstrap classes. So in the next lesson we're going to add in bootstrap and we're going to add in some additional tweaks to this website content in order to present it a little bit more better, make it look more like an actual web page. So we're going to place some placeholder content in there. So that's all coming up in the next set of lessons.